Hi, I am Joe Sam and I am from Technology Research Lab. Modern applications are designed and deployed as a collection of domain-based microservices. These services and web application services should have stateless interaction in order to scale smoothly in the cloud. Token-based security is one of the key parts of microservices security as it is used in a stateless way instead of traditional cookie or session based stateful approach. Let's see what is a JSON Web Token or JWT. JSON Web Token are open industry standard method for representing claims securely between two parties. In an abstract definition, a JSON Web Token is a JSON object that is defined in RFC 7519 as a safe way to represent a set of information between two parties. In other words, JSON Web Token is an open standard that defines a compact and self-contained way for securely transmitting information between parties as a JSON object. This information can be verified and trusted because it is digitally signed. Here in this definition, compact means it is in compact size and can be sent through an URL or a post parameter or inside an HTTP header. Also, compact size will facilitate faster transmission. Being self-contained means the payload contains all the requisite information about the user and thereby reducing any concurrent queries. Let's see how a JSON web token works through this diagram. As the user successfully logs in using their credentials, a JSON web token along with a secret will be created and returned to the browser, which must be saved locally. This approach is different from the traditional approach of creating a session in the server and returning a cookie. Now, whenever the user wants to access a protected resource, the user agent should send the JWT typically in the authorization header. This is a stateless authentication mechanism as the user state is never saved in the server memory. The server's protected routes will check for a valid JWT in the authorization header and if it is present, the user will then be allowed to access the protected resources. Keep in mind, the JWTs are self-contained which reduces the concurrent queries as all the necessary information is there in the token. This allows you to fully rely on data APIs that are stateless and even make requests to downstream services. It doesn't matter which domains are serving your APIs, so cross-origin resource sharing won't be an issue as it doesn't use cookies. JSON Web Token Structure A JSON Web Token is a tag with three different parts separated by a dot. And the three different parts are header, payload and signature. This is how a typical JSON Web Token looks like. Let's look into these three parts in detail. Header the header typically consists of two parts, the type of the token which is the JWT and the type of the hashing algorithm being used. Here the value of the TYP key specifies that the object is a JWT and the value of the ALG key specifies which hashing algorithm is used to create the JWT signature component. This JSON header is encoded using base64 URL to form the first part of the JWT which is the JSON Web Tokens header. Next is payload. The second part of the token is the payload which contains the claims. Claims are statements about an entity typically the user and the additional metadata. There are several different standard claims for the JWT payload such as ISS, the issuer, SUB, the subject and EXP, the expiration time. These fields can be useful when creating JWT 
but they are optional. This JSON payload is encoded using base64 URL to form the second part of the token which is the payload. Lastly, the signature. To create the signature part, you have to have the encoded header, the encoded payload, a secret and the algorithm that specified in the header. The signature is used to verify the sender of the JWT is who it says it is and to ensure that the message was not changed along the way. Now the encoded signature using base64 URL will then be added to the end separated by a dot. It is important to understand that the purpose of using JWT is not to hide or to obscure data in any way. The reason why JWT are used is to prove that the send data was actually created and forwarded from an authentic source. The data inside JSON web token is encoded and signed but not encrypted. Hence, it is best advised to avoid any sensitive data. You can choose a debugger to decode, verify and generate JSON web tokens. There are many topologies available to debug JWT. For our demo purpose, let us use the JWT debugger. Here we have to add the debugger to Chrome. It will prompt us to add the extension and once it is added, we are all set to use the debugger. This is a typical JWT token with header, payload and signature. Here you can see an encoded token and a corresponding decoded header, payload and signature. In this payload, I have claims like subject 12320, name Jojo Samuel, admin true. I will now paste a different token and show how my payload change. See here, the subject is changed to TRL and name changed to Josam. You can also change the header. Let me change the algorithm to RS256. And you can see the corresponding changes has been made to the token as well. This is just to show you how a token is encoded and decoded. Overcoming typical limitations of JWT. As we have already mentioned in our definition that JSON web tokens are an open industrial standard method for representing claims securely between two parties. A typical JWT security implementation does not have the option or features to address certain issues. However, you can overcome those limitations through overriding methods and adding additional components to the ecosystem. Now let us look into broadly discussed limitations of JWT based implementation and the solution to overcome those limitations. For example, in an OAuth based security solution implementation, using JWT as an access token format may have following limitations. On a side note, if you want to know more about OAuth, please refer our previous video. There are mainly two such limitations, first one being blocking user. If a user account needs to be blocked or deactivated, the application will have to wait for the token to expire so that the lockout to be fully effective. Second one being the changed password scenario. For instance, in case of account hijacking, an authentication has been performed beforehand, then a token generated with a previous password will still be a valid one until it expires. Now let's look into the solutions to overcome these limitations. Solution to such a scenario is to define component like identity and access management extension with interfaces to block users, unblock users and password update details etc. Each microservices is expected to validate JWT token before processing the request. Overwrite JSON web token validation method 
and consume identity and access management extension service to verify whether user is blocked or not or password has been changed or not. For example, if user is blocked, then send appropriate message to the consumer instead of processing the request. This way, one can overcome the limitations present in the security solution implementation using JWT as token. In our subsequent video, we will discuss this in detail. Also keep in mind that the JSON web token is method for representing claims securely between two parties and the solution mentioned here is more implementation related. If you want to know more about JWT standards, follow the link provided in the description box.